This mutation is called Instant Karma and it is played on Chain of Ascension. We have three mutators active. We have Double Edged, we have Mutually Assured Destruction, and we have Self Destruction. So, we have Stukov, and we have Orzun. Let's have a look at the Masteries. Orz Stukov has 30 points into the Volatile Infested Mastery, 30 points into the Apocalypse Cooldown, and 30 points into the Infantry Duration Mastery. Vorzun, 30 points into the Dark Pylon range, 30 points into the Shadow Guard Duration, and 30 points into the Spear of Dune Energy Mastery. Prestige selections for Stukov is the Plague Warden Prestige, this is P2 Stukov, and we have P2 Vorzun, which is Withering Siphon. So, these procedures are probably some of the worst procedures in the game, and that is the reason why I casted it, because it, 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 like, assuming that these players are going to be playing the, the way these procedures are going to be played, you can see how you can actually utilize even bad procedures and make them pretty decent in the game. So, very important to actually understand how the procedure works and you know, figure out how to utilize it to the best of your abilities when it comes to this mutation. So, this mutation itself, I think probably the most difficult mutator here is this double-edged mutator. Whenever you deal damage to enemy units, your units will take the, an equivalent amount of damage back, and that amount of damage is going to be healed over the course of time. So, if you are dealing a lot of damage, if you have units with a high DPS, your units will die, but if they have a low DPS, they actually end up surviving and they can end up out-healing. This is why commanders like Nova's Liberators, for example, those kinds of units, those units will end up completely shredding themselves with double-edged, but you can actually end up surviving if you know you have lower HP units here. So you can see we have the Shadow Guard already being utilized here. They will be dealing a little bit of damage and trying to clear this expansion. There is a little bit of detection here as well. The Diamondback being a little bit annoying and trying to kite these guys back and forth. Unfortunately, Shadow Guard unsure which way they want to go. And what do we have here for Sukov? We have an SCV, and probably the Apocalypse will be used to clear his expansion here. We have a Dark Pylon being dropped here. This Dark Pylon will end up cloaking this expansion, which will be really nice for Sukov. Over here we have an initial Harass Wave, but the Harass Wave does end up getting cleared out very quickly. Enemy composition is the Raiding Party. So this is Bioterran, the... This was this is the, the old Bioterran. This is the one that used to be there in the game since the start. And we had a new also... Brood War Bioterran, but this is this is also a really good composition here. Apocalypse does get used here for Stukov, and Stukov will start to clear his expansion. Now these Diamondbacks are going to be a little bit annoying though. These Diamondbacks do like to kite, and you can see here how the Diamondback is like just constantly attempting to kite here, and this is this is exactly what the problem is. Diamondbacks are ridiculously annoying because they will do things like that. And where is this Diamondback going? Oh, deal with the Apocalypse. No, nope, no. Nope. This is actually kind of funny. He's trying to get the diamond back and he's not gonna be- Okay, there we go. He's like, okay, that's it. I'm, d I'm done with this. Uses his infest structure, diamond still kiting, and then unfortunately diamond gets caught in the corner and completely wrecked by the army of broodlings. Next, uh, next harass wave for Amon's champion has spawned and it is going to start dealing with these We'll use here. Yeah, eventually that was a good hit on the Volatile Infested, but unfortunately for Suko that was just not quite enough. And he also does not have the this upgrade, the anaerobic enhancement upgrade. This allows the the volatile this allows all the infested to actually jump in to range here. So these these guys are start attacking for soon's pile up. And now they end up getting cleared. So this shadow guard is gonna be moving in and they are going to cast a manual stasis on this missile turret. The missile turret will be taking damage from this from the withering siphon. Remember the Warzoon's stasis abilities now deal dot damage over a course of time. And you can see here the HP will end up dropping a little bit and here we go. So you can utilize this a lot. Like you can see the amount of damage that is being dealt here. It's 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 not great but you know it's it's a certain amount of damage that gets dealt here. And you can actually utilize this a little bit to your advantage when it comes to playing P2 Vorzun. You can cast your stasis abilities on high priority targets, and then once you have once those targets have taken damage, you jump in with your Dark Templars, and they're all setting a one HP, so the Dark Templars basically one shot everything. So that one command center now is just taking unnecessary damage, but eventually they'll end up getting cleared down. And now we have the big attack wave of this mission. This big attack wave is somewhat problematic. So, time stop, or not time stop, but 
Time stop has not been used yet, so I'd like to see time stop being utilized sometime soon because this might be a little bit of a problem. There's a black hole that gets used right now to try and just stall this attack wave. Apocalypse does get used here, and actually very nice timing on the Apocalypse because like pretty much all the enemy units were caught in that black hole. So as soon as the Apocalypse spawned, it ended up killing everything here. And is the Apocalypse going to survive? The Apocalypse does end up surviving, but it will end up dying once it attacks the spawn. Yeah, there we go. So Apocalypse does end up going down, and then commanders are just waiting a little bit to just ramp up in their power level. So we have some chronos being used here, infested colonist compound as well being utilized. I, one thing I would like to see is the infested colonist compound being pushed a little bit forward. So what you can do is you can uproot the infested colonist compound and move it here on the front line. And that way your infested don't have to actually walk a large distance to get to the front line of the battle. Of the battle. So now we have Centurions, time stop being utilized, Alexander being utilized as well, and these units are going to end up getting harassed at least a little bit. Lots of damage from the double edge being absorbed here, and by the by the random infested, so that's actually really good. And now this hybrid has actually been stunlocked by the Centurions. So this is one of the, I think, one of the most powerful things of P2 Warzone is the ability to just stun hybrids. Unfortunately, those Centurions do end up going down to the hybrid nuke. Remember that mutually assured destruction is enabled, which means anytime you kill a hybrid, there will be a nuke detonated. And almost all hybrids will detonate a large nuke. The only hybrids that do not detonate a large nuke are the hybrid destroyers. Those are the little blue with the little white colored wings. Those tiny hybrids will detonate a small size nuke instead. But every other hybrid on the map, when it dies, it will detonate a full size nuke. So you kind of want to avoid hanging around there. So again, Dark Templar slowly starting to push through, drawing aggro of some of the Raven Seeker missiles. So you see two Seeker missiles going down. These, these Dark Templars probably not going to end up surviving very much. Remember that the damage is also reduced here. So they're dealing 25% less damage. And this is 25% less damage. Like it is it, that that debuff has been added right on top of everything. So spell damage and auto attack damage has also been reduced here. So you can see right now the infested columns compound is moving across. And one thing to note is notice how the infested columns compound moves walks faster when it is with a chrono boost. So I, I don't know whether this is actually a bug. It I think it's a bug, but I'm not really sure. If you chrono boost a structure like this that is walking, it moves a little bit faster, which makes life very, very convenient for Stukov. But yeah, Stukov now moving his stuff in front. He wants to get his army on the front line, and now he's built his Banshees, which is the whole idea of P2 Stukov. Load up your Banshees with Infested. There are a lot of Banelings as well, Volatile Infested, so he's going to be able to utilize that a lot when it comes to this mutation, especially because Double Edged is active. I think it's going to be really, really good, especially with the with Banelings here. The Volatile Infested, you can see there are quite a few here. So what's going to happen here is that these Banshees are just basically going to unload all those Volatile Infested and they're going to detonate and they're pretty much going to wipe out a lot of the enemy units here. And notice how Stukov is actually utilizing this Volatile Infested spawn mastery here. So, Jinara almost ready to trigger the next hybrid spawn so i think they just have to push through hybrids should start to spawn sometime soon yeah stuko just getting slight he's trying to fill up his banshees and there we go okay so next hybrid super pusher spawn and then this is going to be kind of interesting to see because like we have the centurions as well and the centurions have the the dark coil buff which allows them to stun when they charge so that's going to be really good time stop being utilized insurance are going to charge in here there is a black hole i think the black hole was somewhat unnecessary because nothing like the units do not move after the black hole here but you can see how these banshees just ended up one-shotting pretty much everything here you have to be careful with the nukes over here and that hybrid is the two fish hybrid is going to end up going down and yeah there we go so the corsairs now are going to start dealing some damage and you just see the 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 medevac is healing. The medevac is actually healing the hybrid. <laughs> there we go. And a bunch of these Corsairs will end up getting hit as well. Now, one thing that is actually kind of convenient is when you kill these tuna fish hybrids, and I think it's only the tuna fish hybrids, there is a small delay before they detonate their nuke. You see there, like, when it, when it died, there was, like, a one-second delay, and then the nuke went off. So you can also utilize that and, you know, prevent your army from dying. All the other hybrids, I think, will detonate the nuke instantly. I think it's only the tuna fish hybrids which have that one second delay. I do not know why they have a one second delay, but I'm not going to complain about that at all. 
But yeah, all these commanders now, these these banshees are gonna get loaded up with the next spawn of infested. And again, there we go. These banshees all filled up. And really it's kind of luck it's kind of the luck of the draw. Like how many volatile infested are there in this? But we have now again these centurions are gonna be charging in. Lots of inhumanity on these centurions. Vorzoon just trying to push in. Apocalypse is getting used here as well. This apocalypse is just gonna melt. The double edge damage is absolutely insane because the apocalypse deals cleave damage. So it deals damage to multiple units at the same time and double edge procs on all of it. It does not look at just the auto attack, it looks at the damage that the unit is dealing. So that apocalypse just gets instantly melted over here, and now these infested are gonna be able to start jumping in and Thor also getting stunned by the Centurion. Centurion's trying to attack this bunker. We have a black hole getting used here, reducing the battlecruiser's armor to zero. And remember, Corsairs also deal flash damage. So Corsairs deal like a lot of DPS, and they're dealing damage to zero armored units, so they end up also taking an insane amount of damage here. And it will be a while before Vorzun will be able to reset their HPs. Now, here's one of the really cool things about Double Edge when it comes to Protoss Commanders. When you take damage from Double Edge, the damage is added obviously first to your shields and then your HP takes damage. But the Double Edge heals only HP, it doesn't heal shields. So what you can do, what you can do is you can utilize the Double Edge Mutator to heal your Protoss units. So as long as you do not pop your shield, as long as you have, you still have shield and you deal damage to enemy units, the double edge will heal your your HP and heal your permanent HP, which is actually one of the more convenient things. Even though damage is tallied on your shields first, the HP does get healed up as well. So that is one of the really cool things with double edge. And you can see over here what's happening. You saw this HP going up. I'll try and show it to you. It's a little bit difficult because the Corsairs tend to melt really, really quickly. They don't have a lot of shields. But that is something you can utilize as well. So a few more. And now there are actually a lot of Banshees here. And this is actually going to be pretty good for Stukov. He's going to be able to unload all those Banshees and just wipe out the spawn of enemy units here. Borzun getting a few of the Oracles here for detection. Also has a Stasis Ward here. The Stasis Ward will proc and will actually deal a lot of damage. And remember the Stasis Ward duration has also been reduced by 75%. Which is again somewhat of an inconvenience. Like you can utilize... It's kind of interesting because P2 Vorzun is pretty much the only, I think this is the only prestige that can actually stun enemy units. I don't think there is any, I don't think there is any other commander or prestige that can stun enemy units, or, or heroic units for that matter. So, it does open up very, very interesting kinds of play, but then again, Vorzun, again, Vorzun by herself is just a really powerful crowd control commander. She has black holes, she has time stops, she has a stasis calibration upgrade on her oracles, so stunning stunning certain units, I'm not really sure if, if it is necessary, but you can definitely utilize it. And now we have another attack wave coming up here, and Vorzun is already ready, already with a set of stasis wards over here. These stasis wards unfortunately all get triggered by the one siege tank here and now uh, now Stukov has used the Apocalypse kill. So this Apocalypse is going to serve... No, this Apocalypse is so dead. Yeah, Apocalypse goes down. A lot of the Centurions have gone down. Is the Centurion going to survive? Yeah, the two Centurions do end up surviving. So far, a total of 71 Centurions have gone the way of inhumanity there. So these Banshees just try to be a little bit careful. They do not want to get hit by the self-destruction mutator because that is that would be very very unfortunate but we have a lot of infested now parked over there and this is now time for stukov to shine he is going to unload all of his banshees onto the spawn so time stop being utilized here as well there we go all of the infested do get unloaded over here lots of nukes going off and Orzun will have to be a little bit careful because her oracles and her entire army is actually really, really close to these hybrids. So, again, these hybrids are getting stunlocked by the units over here. Sukov has unloaded his banshees on one of the hybrid behemoths. The hybrid behemoth goes down, detonates a nuke, and actually clips a good chunk of Orzun's army. One of the things is Orzun's emergence recall doing a very, very good job here. But you can see, like... Okay, that was actually a very nice dodge, and Warzone now is going to be dealing against some more damage over here, and you can see how, how useful this is. So, a few more Corsairs joining into the mix here. 
And as long as Warzoon like slowly attacks enemy units, this Corsair will start to heal up. It's really difficult to show because double edged is it it triggers and it heals over a very short period of time. But all in all should be okay. Warzoon now gonna be pushing in with what is left of her Dark Templars, and those Dark Templars will end up going down, but you know, if you can even deal a little bit of damage, yeah, some very nice stasis being used on these bunkers. Just trying to get a little bit more damage out of the Withering Siphon. So, yeah, the bunker sits at about half HP now, so all should be good. Commanders are pretty much ready to go. Unacceptable well, these infested just chilling over here at the moment. One of the things I think I would have probably done is use a time stop for dealing with these bases, because you have Stukov unloading all his Banshees on the hybrid Super Pusher spawn, so you don't really need a lot of damage output. Um, I think, because you know your units are already going to take damage because of the self-destruction, right? So maybe it would be better to use the Vorzu and Time Stop to help you push into this, because this is a lot more spread out and there are a lot more nasty units here with their battle cruisers and whatnot. I think it might be a little bit better to use the Time Stops for pushing into the enemy bases and just let Sukov unload all his Banshees on the hybrids to push and spawn and clear all of that out, because Sukov isn't really doing very much during these base pushes because he's pretty much relying on Volume Borzu and just done everything here. But now lots of Diamondbacks doing kiting, lots of Seeker missiles. I hate Darren so much. This triggers me watching all those Ravens just kiting back with their Seeker missiles. But now there is a small harass wave over here. And all these users are now setting up about 1 HP, but these things are gonna end up dying to Strukov's Banshees, maybe? Or perhaps not. Perhaps not. Actually, apparently I was wrong. The the double the, unless this corsair didn't deal any damage to that medevac, maybe like maybe it does not work that way. I could have sworn that like double edge actually healed the HP on the corsair. I'm not really sure. I'll, I'll keep this corsair selective and have a look. I was pretty sure Protoss units get healed on their HP first instead of their shields. But Banshees are now waiting. They're waiting for the final push. It is a small army of marines over here. These things will also end up getting cleared out. Again, next attack wave comes up. Again, double edge dealing a good amount of damage. Yeah, interesting. The double edge actually does not end up healing the Corsair. That's, uh, that's, that's interesting. Okay, so black hole being utilized here on these there's a nuclear launch being detected, but I think that one can already... Force was already aware that there, there was going to be the nukes here, and now... And yeah, this is really odd, because like, you can kind of see the double edge kind of healing? Or that's the Veil of Shadows maybe being utilized here. It's very, very odd. Anyway, this attack wave is going to be dealt with on the northern side, and waiting for... Wars, you'd start pushing in with Sukov. Again, there's a battle cruiser over here being a little bit annoying too. Our forces have met the enemy in combat. Look at these medevacs just spazzing out. Attack. And this attack wave actually has split up on the northern side as well. And because this attack wave has split up on the northern side, like, there's going to be a second part to this little attack wave here. This, this one centurion was doing okay, and then he just gets obliterated by the self-destruction. And I think some of those Banshees also did end up going down. How many losses here? Four Banshees have gone down. 129 Centurions have died. These Centurions will be able to clear up the rest of these Marines. And that one Ghost as well that decided to involve itself in that attack wave. And yeah, a few more Banshees going down as well. Double-edged, pretty nasty Mutator. And you kind of want to avoid high damage units here. Because things can go sideways very very badly so i don't know b2 statement might not be a wise idea on this mutation so alexander getting used here now and it's going to steal this battle cruiser battle cruiser will be dealing a little bit of damage as well clearing out the rest of these marines i think that should be the rest of this enemy base cleared out and all that is left now is for these two players to start pushing janara forward and finish up this mission so they're going to be doing that have another dark pylon over here and now the last hybrid superficial wave has spawned and banshees now are going to be ready to deal with this time stop is ready time stop gets triggered and now these banshees are going to trigger they're going to fire up all of their units over here these banshees are probably going to, wow they actually okay some of them survived i was going to say there are a lot of like units going to be dying underneath them so 
few more hybrids have gone down. There are still a lot of hybrids left on the map. And now you can kind of see the problem with B2's two cop is like these banshees now have to wait for more infested to spawn and they're kind of like just hanging out there unable to really do very much here. And is the science vessel going to irradiate the banshees? Probably not. Nuke gonna be detonated there. And unfortunately Borzun's units all get clipped by the nuke there. Borzun actually the emergency recall is keeping Borzun's units alive. And now these Banshees are just basically chilling here, unable to do very much. There's another Corsair here that is trying to attack this one hybrid. Let's uh, be a little bit careful because the hybrid nuke is going to be detonated. Science Vassal throwing a wrench in the gears there by dropping a... A little defensive matrix and all those Corsairs do end up going down. Lots of inhumanity happening over here. Oracle's trying to help as well by dropping Stasis Wards. And Stasis Wards are going to be okay, actually. And one of the hybrid goes down, killing off that one Oracle. And another hybrid also ends up going down. And I think that should be it. There's still a bunch of Marines here. And these Marines now are going to start stepping forward and starting to attack the rest of Warzone's units over here. Apocalypse getting used to try and stem off or save off the enemy units here. And I think that is okay. This Apocalypse is probably going to end up surviving over the course of time but Janara has been pushed all the way ha halfway through the map now so these commanders will have to go back and pick Janara up again because Janara has slipped a little bit so we have a probe over here and we will have a set of banshees over here and I don't think the next hybrid wave is going to spawn there'll be another wave here of units here these units will all end up getting killed off there is a Battle cruiser here that's gonna be a little bit annoying, but Janara can be pushed forward and now attack waves are gonna be a little bit more frequent, so these commanders will want to try and close this mission as quickly as possible. I think they've pretty much gotten it down now. Unfortunately, there is a Corsair here that needs to be yeah, there we go. So Janara's gonna be pushed. So what were the total losses? 10 man she's going down, so not too bad. She got three barracks, unfortunately, did go down. Nuclear launch has been detected. 12 Corsairs and 10 Oracles. So you know, so given that there's double-edged active, these procedures aren't really the best procedures. And these commanders, probably not, well at least Sukov is not, this kind of Sukov, not very ideal. Commanders played pretty well on this mutation. So that is Janara going to be pushing Amon's champions a bit. And that is GG.